In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions as always. We always take a look at this and then we're going to be taking a look also at some of the upcoming storminess. There is the potential for a nor'easter, uh, which is really interesting, a Miller B nor'easter. And I'll explain what that means uh, in just a little while. Uh, we have also some cold air potentially on the way, just like we saw yesterday. We have more on that later on as well. So let's just take a look at the current conditions real quickly. We can see that there is some storminess along the west coast here, and we expected this to occur, and sure enough, it is. We also see some snowfall here for some of the plains and the Rockies. And then there's a storm system underneath here for some of our deeper south areas in the southeast and south central United States. So we'll work our way from west to east. Also, like always, we always do that for some reason as well. We can see that obviously the coastal and lower elevation areas here are dealing with mostly rainfall and that is light to even moderate in some spots. We can see some yellows offshore of Northern Cal and also some areas onshore of Washington and Oregon and offshore uh, receiving moderate to heavy precipitation. Uh, but as we work our way more towards these ca Cascade mountain ranges, we can see that there is plenty of snowfall taking place as these work their way further and further inland here. Some of these even making their way towards some of these more valley regions in, as well in between. Uh, we can see that there is some mountainous regions here in Oregon and California here, also receiving some snowfall on the more southern end of things. Now, as we work our way towards this area of snowfall near Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado, as well as South Dakota as well, actually, we can see that this is actually a pretty moderate to heavy snowfall event taking place here. Uh, we see the blues mixing in. The, the bright whites are already very heavy snowfall, but the blues are extremely heavy. Whiteout conditions taking place, potential snow squalls as well. We can see a lot of that happening here in these areas. I'm sure it's a very, very snowy uh, afternoon time happening there, or I guess morning out there, but uh, approaching the afternoon. Very, very snowy as of right now. Now, as we take a look here further east, we can see some showers taking place. As you can see, we have a lot of low pressure and frontal boundaries happening underneath here, uh, and that's allowing for a lot of this storminess to take place across states like Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee as well, where we're having this light to moderate, even heavy precipitation taking place in a lot of these different states. And it is moving eastward, so we can expect that the mid-Atlantic here could potentially be seeing some of this a little bit later on tonight and to maybe even tomorrow. So we'll be watching for all of those things. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the upcoming storm in us because, again, there is a lot of interesting things to go over in that department. Now, as we take a look at some of that upcoming storm in us, we're just going to dive into this. And as you can see, well, this should look pretty much like what's happening currently because this is pretty much current. As we just move this on. Towards later this evening, we could see that a lot of this storminess is going to be more spotty, but it will be located over the southeast and mid-Atlantic here, portions of mid-Atlantic. So some spotty showers, not quite as heavy as it was when we just look at the current radar imagery. We could see that there is some storminess starting up up here, and we see more snowfall for uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota there as well. And then we see the snowfall expanding for the northwest. So that's going to be a continuing theme as we move on. We see that storm kind of just moves out here and fizzles out, as you can see, over the Rockies as I draw that terrible arrow. Uh, we see another little storm system here for the weekend. This is earlier on Saturday uh, over the eastern United States. And that one also fizzles out. We see another large West Coast storm system moving onshore, bringing snowfall to many different areas, mountainous regions especially, and some rainfall, obviously, for the more coastal and low elevation regions. We also have some showery activity here across the deeper south. That's Saturday into Sunday. As we approach Sunday afternoon, this could be for more of the southeast uh, as it kind of expands there. We see a little bit of snowfall perhaps in the northeastern United States and a mega storm system bringing snowfall to a handful of states out here in the western United States, even bringing some precipitation to uh, further south there in California. Very interesting stuff there. As we approach the early week, so this will be Monday, we see a 989 millibar low pressure center here. Very snowy across most of the Rockies here, as you can see. Uh, also, again, we've talked about it, but potential for severe weather here. As we see this northern flow, there is probably a bit of a cold front here swinging underneath as well. Uh, so we see multiple factors here. As we approach Tuesday afternoon, I'm also watching this date for potential severe weather as, again, we have this flow to the north out ahead of it, bringing very warm and very humid conditions. And then this cold front extending down southward pushing the cold air right in behind. So whenever you see this kind of a setup, it's definitely concerning for tornadic activity when you have the wind 
heading northward, and then you have wind swinging in and hitting it from the side. That is what causes shear, <clears throat> and that is what is one of the ingredients for tornado is uh, tornado activity. That is, we see snowfall for Minnesota, the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska. There's a, clearly a very large snowstorm here by Tuesday the 13th. And by Wednesday, the 14th year, we see potential severe weather across a lot of these more southeast and Gulf states here in that area. Again, watching that region for severe weather there. Uh, snowfall throughout a lot of these states, still extending all the way back to the Rockies, but also for the Dakotas, uh, Nebraska, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, and even Michigan as well there. And then, and then as we approach later on, we see a lot of this energy transfers uh, I don't know if it's a direct transfer or uh, if we're just seeing another low developing here, but this one happens to die down, and this one happens to really develop here on the eastern end. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of factors at play, but basically there's a ridge, a bit of a ridge here, and this is going to force this low to basically move around. It won't be able to uh, cut like this. It's going to have to uh, move offshore likely, which means we're probably in store for a Miller B nor'easter later on. Now take that with a grain of salt, but we are watching for potentially a pretty major snowstorm here, as you can see, for northern Pennsylvania, New York, New England as well, seeing plenty of this very, very heavy snowfall here. And this could look a bit different, obviously, so it's very, very far out, so we are taking this with a grain of salt. But looking at um, the 500 millibar geopotential height earlier on, I was doing that before I made the video, uh, and overall just a lot of the pressure systems out there it is pretty clear to me that this storm is the best potential we've had so far for a more coastal storm. And as we can see, this would be a 991 here over uh, right near Long Island, still receiving very heavy snowfall here for a lot of the interior, as you can see. And as we continue that on, it looks to cut here on this model. But again, there is a ridge in place down here in southern Canada. So I happen to think that we might get a little bit more of an offshore look which would mean more potential for snowfall for this corridor here. So we'll be watching for this. We'll be going over this every single day. So be sure to subscribe uh, as, again, we will upload every single day like normal. And we will get to the bottom of this situation and everything else regarding the weather. But you can tell, just like yesterday, this cold front swings through, which is, again, an anchor. Uh, and, and that leads towards a big trough in the east and a lot of cold air in place here for the eastern half of the nation. Pretty much truly an Arctic blast here, uh, according to this model, for the second day in a row. We're going to take it with a grain of salt only because these models have continued to back off of these cold signals. However, with that low pressure system and cold front swinging through, that is kind of a good anchor point to indicate that we could be seeing legitimate cool down here in the upcoming pattern. Now, total precipitation through the next 10 days, we're taking a look here at practically no Precipitation there in the white areas. Your grays will be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens, a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues, half an inch to an inch. Your yellows, an inch to two inches. Reds, two to five inches there. And then your browns will be even five to ten inches of precipitation. So we're seeing plenty of that uh, in here, the heavier amounts. And then also for these western areas that are receiving a lot of those storms coming on shore. Those are kind of the two stormiest areas here that I'm seeing. Now, total snowfall through the next 10 days, obviously extreme amounts here, as that is a very large snowstorm this model is indicating. Again, could look a little bit further east than this even uh, in future runs, but like I've met, mentioned met multiple times, take it with a grain of salt. The grays, a dusting if anything here, blues 2 to 6 inches of snowfall, purples 6 to 10, pinks 10 to 20 there, and then your pastel blues 20 to 35 inches of snowfall potentially. And then your pastel pinks within those pastel blues, like we see for the Sierra Nevadas there, 35 to 48 inches plus of snowfall. Surely a whole lot expected for many different areas here as we're finally getting into a wintery pattern here, it looks like, for many different areas. Now, as far as those temperatures are concerned here, let's just roll through this. We have our southeast ridge in place is why things have been warmer overall in the eastern United States. We still have a negative Pacific North American oscillation and that's what's forcing this warm air to move around that cold air mass here into the eastern United States, as you can see. There is some colder air that's able to make its way into the north central United States here. But overall, that negative PNA is going to be a bit of a dagger in this entire pattern. And we're going to have to really, really see if that breaks up at any point here in the upcoming pattern. Uh, we do see that, again, a trough likes to kind of trickle its way in here. 
and then allow cold air to kind of spin off of that into the eastern United States. So we will see some cooler temperatures, but overall, there is a ridge on the eastern side of things, as you can see, pretty clear there. Um, and that cold continues to kind of just blast down here from eastern Canada. But we see a ridge developing here in the north, just some higher pressure, warmer air. And that's what's going to force that storm to basically be a coastal storm. As you can see, this strong ridge here uh, is what, this is right around when that storm will be happening, is what leads me to believe it's going to try to do this, go around that warm air mass, not into it. So that's very interesting. And we see a lot of cold air moving into the eastern United States with that cold front. So right around then. Uh, that's looking at the 16th to the 17th, potentially, for that big cool down. And you can see it gets pretty cold here, okay? On this model run, we see a lot of greens and, and those blues popping up. That's going to be 10 to 15 degrees below normal to even uh, 15 to 25 degrees below normal. So certainly a very significant departure from what's typical. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. So be sure to subscribe, even hit that bell icon for daily notifications because we do upload every single day. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.